I'm Carl. I'm supposed to enter as a novice. We expected you sooner. Weren't you supposed to come here with your guardian? It's been so hectic lately, people will keep turning up out of the blue. He gave me the papers and left me at the gate. You must be used to that, though. I'm not the first novice here, am I? But that wasn't very considerate of him, was it? It's been so hectic here lately, novices arriving one after the other. The last one didn't even have a letter, and you'd think his backside was on fire. The way he kept looking over his shoulder. You took him without the letter? You didn't find that suspicious? My guess is he wanted to hide from someone. But he's a priest and knows how things work in the monastery. So there was nothing to prevent him from being accepted, at least temporarily. You're a different case, though. Are you able to read? Naturally. I wouldn't be here otherwise. So then. Are you ready to enter the Order of St. Benedict and renounce forever the temptations of this world? I am. Then you must rid yourself of all your worldly possessions. Sell them or give them to the poor and needy or donate them to the monastery. You may not enter this place burdened by worldly goods. Inside the gatehouse is a trunk in which you will find monk's robes. Put away all your possessions and dress yourself in the habit. Then you may rest a while, while I go and see the prior to arrange matters for your acceptance. God be with you. Strange feeling being without all of that. I didn't realise how much I'd grown used to it. Everything's prepared. It's time for you to take your vows. Do I really have to wear this? You'd better get used to it. You'll be wearing it for the rest of your life. Brothers in Christ, we have gathered here today to welcome a new novice into our midst. Dear brother, forget your former life and embrace your new vocation in the community of the monks of St. Benedict. Opus Dei, Obedientia, Obprobria, the service of God, obedience, and endurance of all discomfort. These are the cornerstones and succor of our order, which on this day shall become your own. Suscipe me, Domine, secundum eloquium tuum et vivam. Et non confundas me ab expectatione mea. Suski pe me domine secundum. 
in loquium tuum vivam, et et non confundas me ab expectatione me uh, Accept your new name, Brother Gregor, and wear it with honor. Welcome, brother. Welcome, brother. I am Antonius, a novice like you. I've been instructed to guide you around the monastery and tell you what you can expect and what your duties will be. Thanks for helping me out during the ceremony. I had no idea what I was supposed to do. You don't know Latin, do you? Don't worry. Work in the scriptorium will teach you fast enough. Why exactly are you here? Was it your choice? Or did someone force you to come? It was my choice. For a common lad like me, it's the easiest way to get an education and do something worthwhile with my life. It looks like we're both here for the same reason. I think we'll get along. Would you tell me something about yourself? I'm a novice and I'm here because I'd make a poor merchant. I like books and I want an education. Although I must say, so far the monastic life's been quite... unexpected. Let's go then. Good. But before we do, here's a letter directly from the prior telling you all your regular duties from tomorrow onwards. Make sure to read it this evening, so you know how things work. Right, we can go now. Follow me closely. I'll explain everything as we go. Remember one word. Discipline. It's your job to work and pray. You serve the Lord now, not your own bodily needs. This is the way to the dormitory, where we all sleep. You'll find a free bed there, which is now yours. Do you know the first thing the monastery taught me? To appreciate sleep. We rise before dawn every day. It takes a bit of getting used to. God be with you. I've read one of the manuscripts copied by one of the novices. I think I'm going this to is the garden. It's the place for silent contemplation and meditation. Centuries ago, this monastery was founded by the most esteemed of brothers, St. Procopius. His earthly remains can be found in a cave under the monastery, and his spirit wanders the corridors at night, punishing any misbehaving novices. So beware. Here are the fratery and scriptorium, together with the library. These are the places where we work. Ora et labora. Pray and work. As a novice, you must always listen to your superior brethren, and above us monks are the prior and the circators, who punish every infraction. You'll know them by the canes they carry. Do what they say. This is the refectory, where we come together to eat. During meals, you must be silent. Only one brother reads aloud from the rule of St. Benedict. The rule is the only law we recognize, with the exception of those from God himself. If you break any of its precepts, expect a swift punishment. But I've already told you about the circuitors. The library, the pride of our monastery, a trove of learning. We don't just read books here, we also copy them. You too will learn how. And that's all. Today you are still free from duty, but tomorrow you begin work like the others. If you need anything, ask any of the brothers. We'll be glad to help you. And I recommend you get to know the other novices. You already know me. 
Then there is Siskin, Yodok, and Lucas. Thanks for showing me around. There's a lot to learn here. Will you tell me something about yourself? There's not much to tell. I lived in Vlashim, and after my father died, I found out I wasn't much of a merchant. So I left the shop to my brother and decided to become a monk. It's peaceful here. There's food and lots of time to read. So you chose to come here? It may seem strange, but I'm one of the few novices that did. I might be the only one. The truth is, the idea of spending my life in a monastery was more appealing than being cooped up in a greasy old shop. I'd like to ask you something about the monastery. Who's in charge of things around here? Truthfully, everyone except us. But officially, Abbot Peter. And soon enough, someone else. As if it mattered. Our life will still be work and prayer. I see. Are there any rifts between the brothers? Yes. From the moment talk began about electing a new abbot, it's been like a hornet's nest here. Strange you haven't noticed. Tell me something about electing the abbot. Abbot Peter is old. When he dies, they'll have to select a new abbot from amongst the brethren. The candidates are John and Nevelas. And if you ask me for my opinion, Nevelas is definitely the right man. Unfortunately, no one cares about my opinion because novices get no say. Tell me something about life here. Work, prayer, work, prayer, as if you didn't know. We serve God, and that's the central truth of our lives. What are the roles of the various monks here? Someone takes care of the library, someone else the garden. The abbot supervises everyone, and in his absence, the prior. But it's the circators you should worry about. They're the brothers who'll make sure we observe the rule. They can be quite strict, so if you want to avoid getting punished, always act righteously and do your duties honestly. Praise be to Christ, brother. I'm Gregor, a novice. I know. But I've no time for idle chat. I transcribe books from dawn till dusk. I've been doing it for years and I'll be doing it till the day I die. What, you do nothing else? It is my penance and my blessing. And now, brother, if you don't mind, I'd like to get this page finished. What is it, brother? I'd like to ask about something. Can't you see I'm working? Ask someone else. The forbidden books must be in the cover. Written by the devil himself. Forget about it. This looks like the dregs after a night's drinking. Who could be coming here? What is it, brother? I found this piece of parchment. It looks like it's been ripped out of a book. I've no idea. Why don't you ask Brother Librarian? I'd like to ask you something about the monastery. 
Who's in charge of things around here? Abbot Peter is the administrator of the monastery, but you won't see him. He's always traveling, and on top of that, he's old and infirm. Perhaps the good Lord will bless him with many more years of life. And what happens when the old abbot dies? Then we elect a new one. Are there any candidates to be the new abbot? Yes, there are. Brothers John and Nevlas. Cursed elections. Since the brothers began talking about them, there's only been strife in the monastery. On one side are brothers who'd like to see John as abbot. On the other, those who support Nevlas. And they seem to be capable of fighting about it forever. Tell me about John. John is a circator and the oldest brother here. It would be only natural if he took the crozier from Peter. He has experience, merit, and composure. He'd lead the monastery wisely. I'd like to know about Nevlas. Nevlas manages the monastery's property. He doesn't have the most experience, but his drive and heart are pure, his faith firm, and his ideas rational. Although perhaps he's too keen to change our routines here, which many brothers don't like. Why does it matter so much who wins? Because the future direction of the monastery hangs in the balance. The younger brothers feel they have to work more than their superior brothers, and that some brothers are more concerned with their own comfort than with worshipping God. The older brothers take a different view. They say the younger monks want privileges they haven't earned, and each side has its own candidate. I thought politics weren't part of the monastic way of life. You're right. But we know nothing besides the monastery, and the abbot's decisions can influence our entire life. Some of the brothers take it very personally. Are there ever any disagreements between the brothers? Unfortunately, yes. The biggest quarrels right now are about the election of the new abbot. They can already see poor Peter in his grave. Tell me something about electing the abbot. The old abbot is practically on his deathbed. There are two candidates. Half the monastery wants John, the other half, Nevlas. And there's no chance they'll come to an agreement. But you've probably already noticed the atmosphere around here. Tell me something about life here. Prayer, work, obedience. That just about sums it up. Can you tell me something about the rule of St. Benedict? Seven centuries ago, St. Benedict of Nursia wrote a collection of monastic rules which we still follow today. They're read at every meal. The fundamental precepts are obedience, work, and prayer. We're fully devoted to serving God. The outside world, beyond the monastery walls, is foreign to us. Do you never want to know what's going on out there? And what should be going on? The sky is just as blue and the grass is just as green. Perhaps the rulers change, but the greatest ruler of them all will remain unchanged through the ages. I'm interested in the monastery's history. It was founded by St. Procopius 500 years ago. After his death, heretics occupied the place for some time, but then... The order was restored and brothers of the true faith returned. Heretics, you say? They wanted to worship God with some foreign rituals. In a language foreign to God, they were driven away and their books burned. What are the roles of the various monks here? Well, the abbot is the head, but he's not here now. Then there's the prior and the sub-prior, the librarian, the porter, and many others. As a novice, you should be particularly mindful of the circuitors. They're the ones who maintain discipline and punish bad behavior. What can you tell me about the novices here? What can I say? You're here to demonstrate your devotion to God and live a monastic life. After a year, you can make your vows and become a fully-fledged brother. I meant something specific about the brothers that are here. But you know them yourself? Yodok is an odd one, but he's diligent and eager. 
perhaps too eager. Siskin is good company, but a bit too worldly for a monk. Antonius is hardworking and will help with anything, but prays less than he ought. Lucas is as quiet as a mouse, and no one knows much about him. And then we have you, about who I know nothing. Can you leave the monastery? Where would you go? You have everything you need here. Anyway, all the doors here are closed and locked tight, so no one can get in or out. Who would you like to be the new abbot? Brother John, obviously. No one's interested in Nevelas and his new ideas. I'd like to ask you something about the monastery. I'm looking for something a little, um, unorthodox. And what would that be, exactly? I'm looking for lock picks. Lock picks? And what would you like those for? I'd like to practice opening locks, just for the fun of it. Well, why not? So you heard I used to be a burglar, did you? I put it all behind me as soon as I took the vows. But I do have a few lock picks left. I'll trade them for food. Get me a bite to eat, and you can have your lock picks. Can't say fairer than that, can I? My name's Gregor, a novice. You can call me Siskin. Now, are you here of your own free will, or is this a punishment? Although, it's not important. Welcome to purgatory. Did you say purgatory? You'll see soon enough. Soon enough. Will you tell me something about yourself? Look, nothing against you, but I prefer not to talk about my past. Are you hiding something? Why are you so reluctant to tell me anything about yourself? I'm hiding a lousy past that I'd rather forget. I hate to think of all I lost when they stuck me in here. And also because I really hate the question, aren't you the son of the famed Sir Smil Flashka Pardubitz? I was rich and I had everything. But then my father began to feel his time approaching, so he decided to send a son to the monastery. And, being the youngest, a lot fell on me. I've no head for managing the estate, and they said I'd squander it. Can you imagine? Me, in a monastery. So I took what coin I could from home with me, so I didn't lose out completely. But you didn't have to come here if you didn't want to. No, not if I didn't mind being left to beg alms by the city gate. I had one choice, the monastery or nothing. If it had come to that after my father's death, so be it. But to get rid of me while he's still alive... They must have realized you robbed them. <laughs> I donated some of the silver to the monastery when I came in, just to piss them off. I can just see my brothers, I mean my siblings, arguing with the abbot to give it back. And you stashed away the remainder? Indeed so. What's your plan with this treasure? To get out of here as soon as I can. I'll wait another year or two until my hot-headed brothers cool off a bit, and then I'll take the silver and run off somewhere, far, far away from here. That's all I wanted to know. Please, keep it to yourself. Especially the part about the coin. I'm still curious about this treasure trove of yours. It's no big, terrible secret. Really, it isn't. I just go and read during services. There's no time otherwise. I mean, at other times, I don't get to read what I like. And I keep it under the slab so the others don't find it. I'll leave you be. Don't worry, I won't follow you again. Thank you. And please, Gregor, don't mention it to anyone. How is it that you don't get any penance for missing morning prayers? I've paid off the circators to turn a blind eye. And the other monks don't notice as long as you show your face there from time to time. 
No one's still awake at that time of the morning. I'm telling you. I'd be interested to hear what you think about the other novices. Tell me about Antonius. Oh, if there was a monk I'd recommend as a friend, with of course the exception of myself, it would be Antonius. He has a calm soul, he's easy to talk to, and you can always rely on him. That's all. Thanks. Who would you elect, Abbot, if you could? Most likely Nevlas. He's a fine fellow and he seems honest. But, truth be told, it doesn't matter much to me. The monastery will still be a monastery, no matter who's in charge. If you really want to talk more about it, ask Antonius. He seems to have taken an interest. It occurred to me you might be the man to ask. I'm looking for some lockpicks. Do you know anyone in the monastery who could help me? Lockpicks, eh? I won't ask what for. My advice is to try Brother Solarius. kitchen. I bet they keep the tastiest morsels for themselves and give us the s What do you desire, Brother Gregor? Is it possible to learn something about the other novices in the library? Only the abbot and the prior keep such records. And can I see them? No. The abbot writes and keeps his records in his chambers, and only he and the prior are permitted to read them. I found this piece of parchment. It looks like it's been ripped out of a book. Do you know what it is? Hmm. It appears to be a page torn out of Ovid. Ovid? What is that? Is it the name of a book? Not what, but who? Ovid was a great Roman poet. We have a few volumes by him in the library, but one of them vanished one day. Now I believe I can guess what happened. Brother Eustace, may the earth rest lightly on him, was quite narrow-minded when it came to classical literature. If a book had any mention of woman at all, he condemned it as a heretical work. If he'd had his way, all such books would have been burned. Ovid's The Art of Love must have been such a thorn in his side that he stole it from the library, tore it up, and hid the pages wherever he could. Oh, would you like me to put the book back together again? Absolutely. Eustace's wits weren't the sharpest, so I'm sure he didn't destroy any of the pages. I imagine he hid them throughout the monastery. It might take you a while to find them all, but when you do, you can rest assured Ovid will return to his rightful place in the library. Good. I'll look around for it. Thank you, brother. It's of no great importance, but if you can find all ten pages, I'll be most grateful. Where should I look? If I knew, I wouldn't have asked you to do it. The pages of the book could be hidden anywhere, from the garden to the refectory. Can you tell me something about the book? The Art of Love is a sort of manual instructing young people how to find and maintain love. It's a lovely work. I don't understand what bothered Eustace so much about it, but, as I was saying, he considered the book to be immoral and tore it up to stop it corrupting any of his brothers. I found a few pages of the torn up book, but I still don't have them all. Wonderful. Keep looking, then. I'm sure you can find the rest. I'd like... I know. I saw you at the ceremony. My name is Nevlas, and I'm the provost here. I'm in charge of the monastery's property, 
as well as handling trade with the outside world. That means you get to leave the monastery? No, not at all. I just write lists and send them out. Tell me about yourself. I'm the provost of this monastery. It's my job to ensure the monks live a humble life and that any surpluses go to the poor. But in reality, I spend all my time making sure my brother's gluttony and the construction of a new church don't swallow up the few resources we have left. I'm interested in the election of the new abbot. You're not alone. Everyone's so worked up about that, they spent no time considering how they could make the monastery a better place now. Why? What's wrong with it now? Many brothers think more about their stomachs than prayer. The older brethren bend the rules of the order to make them fit their interests. So, to balance the scales, they want the novices to lead exemplary lives. Sin abounds here, just as in the outside world. What sins are you talking about? The scripture says, Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. I'm sorry, Gregor, it's not my place to speak about the sins of others. Tell me something about how the new abbot will be elected. A new abbot has to be elected once the old one dies. All the brethren can vote, with the exception of novices. The abbot's crozier will be conferred on whoever is chosen, and he'll take the vow. When he becomes abbot, a monk spends most of his time dealing with politics outside the monastery, instead of actually leading the monastery. But he still maintains a fundamental influence on life here. Can you tell me about Abbot Peter? Peter's wise in the ways of politics and a good shepherd, but as you've already heard, he's old and infirm. The other brothers see him with one foot in the grave, but I still have hope for him. But you, brother, don't let yourself get involved in the games of your superiors. Could you help me with something? With what? I'm interested in medicine, and I know there's a cure for the abbot's ailment. With your help, I could find out the details, and together you and I could give old Peter a few more years to do good. What do you say? What do you need me for? In order to get the recipe for this medicant, a few rules will need to be broken. Now you know most of the brothers believe every illness is a message from God, and that it's not our place to deny his will. I, however, think if God sent us not just illnesses, but also the medicine to cure them, then it's our duty to relieve people of their suffering. The cure for Abbot Peter's illness could be contained in one of the books in our library, but it will certainly be amongst the Libri Prohibiti, the forbidden books, those we aren't permitted to read. Why are they forbidden? Because they contain occult and demonic practices. Witchcraft and all manner of evil, or so some people claim. It's nonsense, of course. This is nothing but a book of medicine, albeit one written by a pagan. Ibn Sina, also known as Avicenna, is universally acknowledged to be a wise man. But here, at some point, someone decided his book is the work of a Saracen devil and must be kept under lock and key. Since then, no one can even talk about the book. But the three wise men were from the East, were they not? Where can I find it? In the library, there's a large cabinet with a lock on it. The forbidden books are inside. You'll easily recognize what you're looking for. The cover has not only a Latin inscription, but also Saracen letters. Bring it to me, but leave the other books there. No one will notice if one book disappears, but if more were to vanish, someone would certainly begin to look into it, which is exactly what we don't want. Is there anything you can tell me that would help? There's a key to the cabinet in the prior's chambers. The librarian should have another one, or you can acquire some lockpicks. But I can't tell you where or how. Perhaps Brother Solarius could help. Why can't you do it yourself? Because I am one of the highest-ranking monks here. And one day I'd like to become abbot. Can you imagine me crawling around in the black of night searching for a forbidden book? You could just ask for it. You're right. Do you honestly think I haven't tried? Unfortunately, Librarian Cyril is a stubborn ass. But one battle be soon. I'm ready. It's a wonder the prior doesn't change. One more important thing. There's always someone in the library during the day. To pass unwatched, you'll need to go at night. It's locked. 
but I'm sure you'll manage to get in. They say Brother Solarius understands locks, but don't tell him why you need it. Once you have the book, bring it to me, and I'll then use it to make Peter's medicine. We'll soon have the election of the abbot over and done with. I'm interested in the election. Why? Me I'll be interested to know more about Brother John. I don't like to speak ill of people, but Circuitor John is the worst person the monks could pick to represent them. He's nothing but an old schemer and pedant who preaches water but drinks wine. He's won the older brethren over because they know he won't call an end to their debauchery. Why do you want to become abbot? Because when I see the way things are headed around here, I have no other option. Itinerant preachers speak of the corrupted black heart of the church, and I can't deny there's truth in what they say. I'd like to change things and bring back meaning and esteem to the monastery. That's all. Thank you. Peace be with you, brother. Ah, this looks like the Saracen language. Ib al-Hassan. That's who I'm looking for. A listener. I'm Gregor, a novice. I saw you at the ceremony. I know. It was hard not to notice you. And you are? Lucas, also a novice. Don't get upset, but I don't want to talk to you. I'm happiest alone. I'd like to know something about the other novices. I don't know much, but ask away. What can you tell me about Siskin? Not a lot. I don't know him. Actually, I don't know much about him at all, except that he's not a stickler for rules. Tell me about Antonius. I'd like to, but there's nothing to tell. I've never spoken to him. I've never asked about him. You really don't know anything about anyone? Well, thanks anyway. Don't get upset. I'm sorry I can't tell you more. I just haven't felt like getting to know anyone yet. I've read one of Will the you tell me something about yourself? The I, there's nothing I can tell you. I mean, where you're from, what sort of life you had before, that sort of thing. I'm a novice, and my monastic name is Lucas. Nothing else matters. Come on. Is there really nothing at all you can tell me? Well, I could, but I don't want to. I'm sorry. I want to stay focused on work and prayer, not on who I once was. I never will be again. What has been isn't important for us. We cast the past aside when we walked through the monastery gates and took our oath. Never forget that. If you could, who would you vote for to be the abbot? But I can't vote, so what's the point of worry? Ask Antonius. He often talks about it, and I'm sure he has an opinion. I'd like to ask you something about the monastery. Who's in charge of things around here? Truthfully, everyone except us. But officially, Abbot Peter, and soon enough, someone else. As if it mattered, our life will still be work and prayer. Are there already candidates to be the new abbot? Brothers John and Nevelis, but the others have been fighting like dogs because of them. We don't have to fight about anything, though. This John, who is he? A circator, and really just an unpleasant old man. It's mostly the older brothers on his side, because they believe he'll protect the status quo and all the benefits that come with long service here. Tell me something about Nevelas. Nevlas manages the monastery's property. He's what they call the provost. He'd like to bring back solemnity to the monastery through reform and by returning to pure faith. <laughs> a lovely idea. But most of the monks are against it. Why can't novices vote? They say we don't have enough experience to decide about anything. Don't worry. We'll get our chance. 
Why is Hu Win so important? We're young and we'll spend the rest of our lives here. And the abbot decides everything about our lives. Didn't it ever occur to you how powerful he is? Well, that's all. Thank you for your time, brother. Let's hope things will settle down a bit around here now. You mean after the I'm Gregor and I'm new here. I know. I saw you in the church during the ceremony. I have a feeling we'll be meeting again soon, and often. You see, I'm a cicada. What does that mean? I make sure everyone observes the rule, does their work, and that everything is the way it should be. And when it's not the way it should be? Then we're authorized to mete out punishment. But certainly you won't require correction, will you, brother? About you in the election, will you tell me more about it? Ask me anything you want. Tell me something about Nevelas. Nevelas is weak and toothless. He's full of hot air. How anyone could think he'd make a good abbot is beyond me. Enough. I don't even want to hear his name again. I'd like to know what's going on here. Well, the young brothers feel they don't have the same rights and responsibilities as we, who have spent much of our lives here. And what of it? Privilege needs to be earned. Nevelas is lying when he says he wants to right wrongs. All he cares about are the benefits for himself and his cronies. I'd like to help you if I can. Hmm. There is something you could do. I am convinced Nevelas must have done something that would greatly damage him if everyone found out. If he was preaching water and drinking wine, for example. So I should dig something up on him and tell you about it? Exactly. But I doubt you'll have any luck. Nebulus is too cunning and careful to give anything away. Once I find something out, I'll tell you. Thank you for answering. I tell you, brother, these all my... to our Lord Jesus.
Can't you see? We're at Mars. Don't move a muscle. Brother, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be... I definitely was there. I did come a little late, so perhaps no one noticed me. Really? I'll pretend nothing happened. But this is the last time, brother. 
Not now, brother. After mass. Salve, be well. Therefore, when anyone receives the name of abbot, he ought to govern his disciples with a twofold teaching. That is to say, he should show them all that is good and holy, by his deeds even more than by his words, expounding the Lord's commandments in words to the intelligent among his disciples, but demonstrating the divine precepts by his actions for those of harder hearts and ruder minds. what he is called, and should know that to whom more is committed, from him more is required. Let him make no distinction of persons in the monastery. Let him not love one or the other, unless it be one he finds better in good works or in obedience. And let him not shut his eyes to the faults of offenders, but since he has the authority, let him cut out those faults by the roots as soon as they begin to appear. Remembering the fate of Heli, the priest of Silas. For well disposed and those of good understanding, let him correct with verbal admonition the first and second time. But bold, hard, proud, and disobedient characters, he should curb at the very beginning of their ill doing by stripes and other bodily punishments. Knowing that it is written, the fool is not corrected with words. And again, Beat your son with the rod, and you will deliver his soul from death. The rule of Saint Benedict. Readings on daily manual labor. Idleness is the enemy of the soul. Therefore, the brethren should be occupied at certain times in manual labor, and again at fixed hours in sacred reading. To that end, we think that the times for each may be prescribed as follows. From Easter until the calends of October. When they come out from prime in the morning, let them labor at whatever is necessary until about the fourth hour. And from the fourth hour until about the sixth, let them apply themselves to reading. After the sixth hour, having left the table, let them rest on their beds in perfect silence. Or if anyone may perhaps want to read, let him read to must be taken into consideration. Praise be to Christ. I'm here to work. Excellent. I've been waiting for you. There's the alchemist's laboratory. You'll find ingredients in the chests next to it. Today it's your task to concoct two potions to aid digestion. Once you finish them, you'll find me somewhere nearby. Don't forget to let me know when you're done so I can check them.
talk to me, brother? I've finished my work. Show me what you've made. Spectacular, Gregor. You've found your talent. Soon enough, you'll be teaching the other novices. What troubles you? I'm looking for something a little, um, unorthodox. And what would that be? I need to get hold of some kind of weapon. Well, I can't help you with that. And besides, what use would a weapon be in here? I need to get some wine. <laughs> You're not the only one. But I have to keep records of all the casks and the prior checks on them. If you notice any loss straight away. Just like our food, everything's rationed. So I'm sorry, but I'll have to disappoint you, brother. I'm looking for lock picks. Lock picks? And what would you like those for? I'd like to practice opening locks, just for the fun of it. Well, why not? So you heard I used to be a burglar, did you? I put it all behind me as soon as I took the vows. But I do have a few lockpicks left. I'll trade them for food. Get me a bite to eat, and you can have your lockpicks. Can't say fairer than that, can I? What is it? What troubles you? I'm here to work. Good. This is most likely the first time you've ever done this in your life. But it's easier than you think. Just a bit of practice and learning Latin. Here's the original, and here are the blank parchments on which you'll copy what you read in the original. Is that clear? Then you may begin, and try not to make a mess of it. You call that a copy? You've completely ruined the parchment with your scribbling. Salve Domine.
lukewarmness, grumbling, or objection. Peace be with you, brother. Brother? Where were you during Mass? Don't tell me you didn't know that Holy Mass is the foundation on which your life... You're right, brother. This is your second warning. Do it again and you will be punished. Greetings, brother. I'm Gregor and I'm new here. Greetings to you, brother. I'm Yodok, the oldest of the novices. I hope you'll like it here in the monastery and that you won't get into trouble. Trouble? You're young, perhaps intemperate. You might easily stray from the rules of the order. I suggest you get to know the older monks. You never know when it might come in handy. I'm interested in the other novices. What can you tell me about Siskin? Oh, he's always got a smile on the new friend. But I reckon he don't belong in the monastery. He spends more time dreaming of the world outside than tending to his duties. I'm surprised he hasn't been thrown out already. If it was up to me, he'd be out on his ear right away. Sounds like you don't have much time for him. I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. Believe me, Gregor, he's hiding something from us. In fact, now I come to think of it, I haven't seen him at morning prayers for a while. Do you know anything about Antonius? Only that he came to the monastery voluntarily, because he didn't want to work in his father's shop. Antonius is all right. You can rely on him. He won't betray your confidence. He's always happy to help, which is more than can be said for the other brothers. I'm interested in Lucas. Nobody knows much about Lucas. He keeps himself to himself. If you ask me, he's got something to hide. I'd keep well clear of him if I was you. Do you have any grounds for suspecting him of something? Quite a lot. And also none at all. The circators who make the rounds despise him, and they never punish anyone without cause. What can you tell me of... Oh, he's always got a smile and... I'm surprised he hasn't... Can you tell me something about yourself? I would if there was anything noteworthy to say. But I'm just the ordinary son of a landowner. Now a monk. There's nothing in my past, present, or future that anyone could find interest. Why did you join the monastery? Because it was better than living in poverty. As the youngest son, I'm not entitled to inherit my father's estate. But he was kind enough to sell off some cattle and send me here. And you know what? I'm glad to be here. It's better than mucking out manure. Who would you vote for as the new abbot if you could? Why do you care? We don't have the right to vote, so we shouldn't get mixed up in it. I'm just interested, that's... I like John better. But like I've said, it's not our place to get involved. It's enough that Antonius is mixed up in it. Don't you start too. Therefore, when anyone receives the name of abbot, he ought to govern his disciples with a twofold teaching. That is to say, he should show them all that is good and holy by his deeds even more than by his words, expounding the Lord's commandments in words to the intelligent among his disciples, but demonstrating the divine precepts by his actions for those of harder hearts and ruder minds. The abbot should always remember what he is and what he is called, and should know that to whom more is committed. From him, more is required. Let him make no distinction of persons in the monastery. Let him not... Be one whom he finds better in good works or in obedience. And let him not shut his eyes to the faults of offenders, but since he has the authority, let him cut out those faults by the root. I'm a new brother, a novice, Gregor. I don't know my way around here yet. You're in charge of the whole monastery, aren't you? Welcome amongst us. Yes, yes. The Lord wanted me to take over the abbot's duties in his absence, but... Mainly, I'm a servant of God, just like you and all the other brethren. Before God, there's no difference between us. How do you like it here? It's wonderful here. I'm glad to hear it. May your enthusiasm last. Brother, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be working somewhere? I You're right, brother. 
This is your second warning. Do it again and you will be punished.